me, this is a punt, right? You just say it's in develop, you say it's in development hell for a long time. And then, oh, they just kind of agree to go their separate ways in 2024 or 2025 when they realize they couldn't quite come to the story they wanted to tell. If you say it now, if you if you cut it now, it subverts the good, like the, the excitement you're trying to build around the DCU, right? Like if you come out and say like, as part of this unveiling, that thing is dead, buried out. There are people who will fixate on that yeah. and run with that and trump the other things that they're talking about what up everybody and welcome back to another episode of the nudge Jam report i'm your host pablo and joining me as always is mr brian schultz brian we got the announcements of the dcu movies coming out in 2025 in 2023 we have obviously the shazam film flash blue beetle um, and he, he obviously mentioned those, but we were more interested in the new stuff, right? Let's start off by him announcing Matt Reeves' Batverse, giving us a release date, Brian. I have affectionately assigned Batarangs to all of these projects. So <laughs> that was an automatic five Batarang yeah, announcement, yeah, 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 a, yeah. a firm date for part two of the Batman. I am looking towards the end of the year, Brian towards seeing a trailer for this Batman 2 movie. I'm hoping to see that by the end of this year. I, based on my, upon Matt Reeves' comments, I am more convicted than ever, by the way, that the Penguin series is essential as a bridge between what we now know officially is literally called part two. Like this is yeah. no, make no mistake. This is a connected, singular narrative and i think this penguin it makes me even more excited for the penguin show in between which incidentally might have the reigning best actor as oscar because colin farrell's now the favorite to win an oscar this year that's gonna be hilarious see the Very best actor as the penguin <laughs> <laughs> so but anyway now i did want to float one other thing though that i you mentioned the firm release date it was not lost on me and i don't think it was lost on you 2025 it's a long time if marvel shows up on time then i wait like dc is like we're coming for you we're gonna put superman and batman opposite kang dynasty we're gonna find out what people want to see james gunn is the type of individual that loves these situations and he's gonna i mean he's in a position to compete yo and he's gonna do everything i think he needs to do because he knows he hears the fans he's he's on social media he knows what people want that's why he when he speaks about these characters he speaks very specific about what he wants to see in these characters which brings me to superman legacy brian yep the announcement of uh this superman film that's supposed to be released in 2025 july 11th yep. There was something Peter Saffron had said regarding Superman, Brian. Do you have the quote there? Well, there was a comment. I thought it was Gunn that made it, though, about kindness, where he said yes. this is about, like, Superman represents okay. kindness in a world where kindness is kind of no longer valued. Yes, yes, yes. And it was that the movie would center on kind of that, how to balance the Kryptonian heritage with his sort of Smallville upbringing in that context, which I think... As we said, the modernization of Superman is key to this film. And I think they're hitting on one of the more, more obvious struggles of how, how do you make Superman relevant to a society where his values kind of seem old fashioned, to be quite honest. Yeah. Yeah. So he said a lot of the right things, man, in terms of what Superman needs to be. Um, and how can I say this without moving on? But it puts some of the other titles in perspective brian um especially the uh what are they called the outsiders oh we'll, we'll get to i did want to say one other thing which is they so you had the awkward moment of saffron saying he hopes gun directs it <laughs> after gun had publicly said he wouldn't yeah. You also had them both saying, though, that several directors for a number of projects were very close to being signed. 
I do wonder if part of the reason this hit on just January 31st was they were trying to see if they could get a contract or two over the finish line and maybe it just didn't quite make it. But I want, I would venture to say, given that Superman has a release date and Gunn's comments about, hey, we're not shooting these until we have a finished grip, would suggest to me that there, is, there has to be at least one very active conversation with a director not named James Gunn to direct Superman. Yeah. And I, I, I am still hoping, whoever that is, that it's a good choice that it's not James Gunn and that at Comic-Con the unveiling comes and it's not. So it, it does feel like there's already with the Superman film like two possible roads it could take, which is the gun-directed road and, and the non-gun-directed road. But, um, but then Gunn also... So to clarify, Saffron was the one who made the comment about kindness. Gunn's comment was, Superman is for everyone. This is a four-quadrant yes. film that should speak to everyone in the world. Yes, And that's what I, and that's what we expect, right? This is not a Superman for just some people. This is a Superman for everyone. Right. Um, and, and this is the right approach, Brian. And and I'm so this makes me very excited. That's the t- type of Superman that we're gonna see. And I think I'm telling you, the only two release dates they committed to were the July for Superman in 2025 and Batman part two in October. And I I totally understand that one is Canon and one is Elseworlds, but I don't care. Like both of those are five Batarang anticipation projects. And if they hit both the momentum for the rest of the, like, let's be straight. If we come out of this with nothing other than an amazing Superman film and an amazing continuation of the bat of the bat verse, it's already not a failure. Yeah. And DC is back on the map with Batman and Superman, albeit not necessarily in the same universe, but something that people are just excited to see what's next. 2025 is that's that's it. That's the, like, year. That's the, that's the year. year. What else is supposed to come out that year for Marvel? Is it well, Kang said, Dynasty? So Kang Dynasty is a summer film. So Superman would be not necessarily opposite that, but like within months of it. Um, and then we don't know. It seems like Fantastic Four might be slipping into that range, right? Of like late 24, early 2025. Uh, yeah. So that would be the other kind of temp pole Interesting. that would be that year. They also said, uh, Brian, that uh, that J.J. Abrams movie uh, with ta Coates is, is oh, still yeah. in development, which you believe it's, it's just uh, not going to happen. Um. Until I see this movie like on a screen, I will believe that this is quite honestly like public relation. Like all due respect to Tana Hasekos and JJ. This is literally, by the way, the only JJ Abrams mentioned in the entire presentation. So that huge production deal they had with him has been reduced to this. Just to this movie. Which makes me believe that, like, really? Like you're gonna you're gonna you throwing him a bone with this, but like nah, I, I'm not that excited for it. Like I'm yeah. much more excited for Super legacy all due respect to Tanahasi Coates like and I just have a tough time believing that like the studio is going to give the same resources and promotion to the like I just I don't buy it like it just feels of this studio took a lot of heat for canceling minority led projects and they just don't want to be seen hacking another one on but the this floor is, on the writer's room floor but this is one that deserves to be to me this is a punt Right. You just say it's in develop. You say it's in development hell for a long time. And then, oh, they just kind of agree to go their separate ways in 2024 or 2025 when they realize they couldn't quite come to the story they wanted to tell. If you say it now, if you if you cut it now, it subverts the good pu- like the, the excitement you're trying to build around the DCU. Right. Like if you come out and say, like, as part of this unveiling, that thing is dead, buried out. There are people who will fixate on that yeah. and run with that and trump the other things that they're talking about. So to me, that's why I said this feels like PR to me. It doesn't feel real, Pablo, that they're actually yeah, going to yeah, go yeah. through with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think they're going to go through with it either. I hope they don't go through with it. I mean, it just doesn't, it, it just brings attention to something that you're not. Like, it, it doesn't bring the right type of attention, is what I'm saying. And it, it's just we just need to focus on these characters, and that's it. Not. To me, this is just, for me, Brian, this is just a publicity stunt. The Authority. Brian, I didn't know who they were. I did a little research. 
I want to hear your thoughts on this. Because this comes right after Superman, correct? Yep. So it's going to be interesting. I, I have my thoughts. I want to hear your thoughts on this. Well, I think when you when Gunn is sort of saying, look, we can't tell just plain old good versus bad and typical stories, you knew he was going to go to the well on something in the gray. And I think one of the things that I, you know, I think it was very conspicuous that the Suicide Squad was not retained. Uh, I think Gunn did not call, I think very wisely did not call his own number. Um, and so he put them on the shelf. But once you put the Suicide Squad on the shelf, I think there was a void there for sort of how can I get a team of anti-heroes? How can I get a Dirty Dozen style mission into this universe? And I think this was ultimately what they settled on. And I think they probably like the fact that this probably is not as well known. And so it kind of gives them a little more freedom in a way that Gunn himself probably didn't have with the Suicide Squad because it had been on screen five years earlier. It gives them a little more freedom to just introduce you to these characters and make you feel like you've never seen anything like this before. But it, yeah, I, I think that's what they're going for. They, they threw out the reference to Colonel Jessup from A Few Good Men as like the... <laughs> Kind of the, the analogy for what how these people would operate, right? That you, yeah, yeah. you need me on that wall kind of uh, approach. So there's always room for that in these type yeah. of universes. I, for me, like this was not one of my like I had basically the, of, of the batterings. I had it at two because I was like, you got to prove this to me a little bit before I really care. I had but Jupiter's I Legacy it, vibes, but I think this is what brings about the Justice League. Uh, so I think that's probably a setup for for that. Um, so, I mean, for me, it's, it's also a two, but I think he's going for that with this, with the authority storyline, Brian. And again, he, he says some key things with Grant Morrison and, and, and the hyperclan is one of my favorite storylines and how that came about. So I'm pretty sure there's some thought about bringing that storyline together and using the authority to, to, to bring it to life. I think that's a good call, especially because, you know, if they do establish sort of a, a, a righteous Superman, right, in his way of solving issues, you immediately have the point counterpoint of it's almost the extreme version of Batman. We know that super, part of Superman and Batman's chemistry is how they go about solving problems, right? And this is a more yeah. extreme version of that even. So I think you're right. That's a good call. I had not considered the because the Justice League was so absent, it wasn't really even mentioned at all in this presentation. They stayed really away from that. But you're right. Like this would be a potential stepping stone to to building that or even just saying, look, they already exist and here's why they exist. You know? yeah. So yeah. the brave and the bold. So the Grant yes. Morrison run, I gave this four batterings. I think they found a lane to get people energized about a Batman angle that we haven't seen before. I congratulate them on that. I didn't think that was necessarily possible. I thought they were going to go more conventional if they weren't going to use Pattinson. But the clues, and you are correct. So in this run, Bruce Wayne is older. He's a dad. Doesn't necessarily know he's a dad, but he's a dad. Yeah. And the Morrison run very purpose purposefully made, and this is where I think Richardson could work, made Batman a little lighter hearted. He's not as down on the dumps and <laughs> as Pattinson is, quite honestly, which I think is smart. You don't want to have two characters doing that at the same time. Yeah, that gets yeah, confusing. Yeah. Yes. So they went older and they went a little bit lighter. Why? Because Morrison's big little wrinkle when he took over this run was he said, what if Bruce was a little more fun, but Robin was the screwed up one? <laughs> and that's what they're going to do because Damian Wayne is coming and he's not that righteous. Yeah, yeah. They describe they describe him, him as a murderer. Less than heroic terms. <laughs> so it sounds like it's more Robin's the lead. Bruce is the father that he, that Damien never had, and then comes back into his life. You get a father. You get an awkward father son story involving Batman and Robin, and that could work. It could. That could work. I just hope you know me, Brian, that they don't make Batman goofy. I don't think they are going to go for that, but I just hope that they don't make him goofy. That's my thing. I don't think he has to be goofy. You know what I was thinking when I read that was actually like, 
I was actually thinking um, Kevin Conroy's version of Bruce Wayne, who to okay. me is has a little bit of a lighter side, but he's not goofy at all. He's not a yeah. jokester. Yeah. But when you see him out of costume, he is not constantly brooding and angry either. Yeah, that's what I had in my head because the reality is when they pitch when when they cast this around Hollywood, everyone's going to want the Damian Wayne part. To be quite honest, that's the more fun part. Yeah, it is like that. If you just weigh this comic read that the Bruce Wayne part is he's kind of the straight man. It's the Robin part where you get to go crazy. I just. This is this because the thing is, we got to like Robin. Yep. If we don't like Robin. Then this falls apart pretty quick. So. They got to find the right guy. Hopefully they can, Brian. Because if you don't, if we get another Black Adam kid. No, so, I don't think it'd be that bad. No, I don't. Just I saying. think he'll be a little older than I think he'll be a little older than that. I mean, he's he, I think, you know, but I think it's. Yeah, I think it's the idea of like an anti, kind of an anti-hero Robin who's almost uncontrollable and you know makes a lot of mistakes. But again, a younger lead. That's clearly what this is. You know, and that's what they're betting on, you know, to ultimately develop some chemistry. And this is someone who's going to cross paths with Superman, their, their younger Superman at some point, because this is canon. And this is their D. So their DCU Batman is going to be a little bit older than, than Superman, which is fine. I, that's totally yeah. acceptable. So, yeah, I I will be fascinated to see how they pull this off. But they called it the Bat family. So they said, like, it sounds like it isn't just the two of them. Like, everyone's kind of fair game. So. It's at least different. As I say, yes. they got my attention. They got my attention. I didn't think they'd be able to do that with Batman in this context. They get Alan Richardson as Batman. You have my full attention. <laughs> Next, they announced a very interesting a title, Supergirl, Wo Woman of Tomorrow. And they made some very interesting distinctions, Brian, with regards to the way Superman grew up and the way she grew up, which is, it has to do with one of those animated films where she is sort of new to everything and doesn't know, but she's very volatile. Uh, so I think we're gonna see that Supergirl and based on the description of where she sort of has been living for some time, um, it's going to be very interesting the type of Supergirl we're going to see. And who knows if we see a Superman cameo. So are, are you familiar with this comic? No, I'm not. Okay, so I, I'm going to make a... This is my boldest prediction. Okay. <laughs> so you could tack it up on the wall and hang it over my head a couple <laughs> years if I'm wrong. I am going to say that of all the canon projects film or TV, I think this will be the best one. Wow. This one. That's my prediction. Here's why. Okay. Um, it is based on a comic by one Tom King, who is okay. in the writer's room. <laughs> All right. But here's why I think it can work and really work if they get the right character. I said in our lead up to this show, what's one thing I thought they had to do? I thought they had to get to outer space. I thought they had to get to the extraterrestrial. This is it. They mm -hmm. did it. They didn't do it in the way I thought they were going to do. I think this could be massive. Why? Because the, I, the way this comic is written, it's very similar in structure to The Mandalorian. It's basically Supergirl in outer space, I think it starts on her birthday and she's known nothing basically but war and war torn and she's kind of down on her luck to live for. Mm -hmm. And this girl kind of like stranger comes into her world on a revenge mission to avenge her father's death at the hands of this like super gangster, super villain gangster. So she ropes Kara into this like globe trotting. They go here, they do a job, they go here, they fight a monster. They go to these different worlds on following clues to get to this guy because they crashed or creme or something. 
So you have the mentor mentee with like Supergirl and this like stranger, kind of like Mando and Baby Yoda, going to all these places you've never seen before. But it's Supergirl having to do super things to get out of it. So it's like fighting monsters you've never seen before, or like fighting super powered villainous gangs on a, like, I think one's called like the Brigands or something like that. So <laughs> there's a series of these that leads up to this sort of final confrontation. Now, obviously they're doing this all in one movie. So you're not going to see like all of the run, but I think this could work. Like if you have like a hard edge, like female led super human action film that's out in outer space with the right cast. And oh, by the way, this series also features Crypto the dog, Comet the horse. Like <laughs> it has the elements that kind of have mass appeal. You can kind of mix in like a little John Wick, a little Mandalorian, and you kind of all of a sudden have super, I, I'm telling you, if they, if they get it right, <laughs> This could be like something you've never seen before and people talk about it. The description sounds very compelling to me, Brian. Uh, and, and how you describe the, the, the Woman of Tomorrow storyline uh, certainly has a lot of elements that I think the audience, when you think about Avatar uh, and how successful that's been, there's nothing out there like it and Supergirl and the way you're describing, if they're going for that, that could be a pretty awesome story to tell. Feel very different from Superman and Batman. That's why I thought it was important to do something that wasn't on Earth. Yeah. And so I, I just like that, if nothing else, this isn't like sort of not on Earth. It's like way out. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So it'll be, again, the key to these movies, Brian, that will carry momentum towards the next will be their end credit scene. So these movies and where they end up and what story they tell next is going to be a part of this whole project. So what happens in Supergirl or at the end of it um, will certainly be something that we're waiting for to see. So that was Supergirl. Anything else, Brian, before we move on to the, the, the last one? Yeah, you can go ahead to the last one. Then I want to come back to one sort of non-announcement that I wanted to ask you about. But go ahead okay. to, the last, to the last film. Swamp Thing. Now, we saw Swamp Thing in the DC... <laughs> streaming thing that they had whatever that was um and that was a show brian that had a lot of buzz we let we found out later that they were spending way too much money on this <laughs> yeah. and they said and they said that's it <laughs> i don't care <laughs> how many people like this this is way too much money and uh this certainly goes up um Guns Alley as to the type of things that he wants to do. And I'm pretty sure he's going to have um, a few collaborators that are going to be uh, uh, working on this with him, Brian. What were your thoughts on the Swamp Thing announcement? And do you think it sets thought, up anything else? Well, so the short answer is yes, because what I what exactly I'm not totally sure. But yes, because they chose to put it in chapter one, they chose to say, look, everything leads into this and they chose to list it where they did. So it clearly has a purpose beyond just Swamp Thing. It clear now, if James Gunn is being true to his word about genre, this has to be horror because they said it's their horror genre entry. To see what they do with that, because that, you know, that means it's, it, it might be more serious than you think. It might be more dark than you think. It might be more creature feature than you think. Like almost like werewolf by night, but even maybe a little more gothic even. So I I, I gave it two and a half batarangs, but I'm like, I'm intrigued. Like, cause, cause of what they said, like, let's just see how different this is gonna be. I am a little surprised they went film for this as opposed to show. Like this seemed like a little bit more of a risk. Like, you know, everything else is like Superman, Batman, the Supergirl, like, okay, those are brand new characters. Swamp Thing, like, has a brand, but it felt a little more niche to me, so I was like, you're yeah. really gonna go 
main, you know, on the big screen. And they're like, okay, like we'll see. But you know, that that was a little TBD to me. But I'm interested. Like that's, I'm not shocked that they look. He called it gods and monsters. You can't call it gods and monsters if you're not going to do some yeah, yeah, monsters notable stuff. monsters, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> so here it is. So. Uh, again, James Gunn is uh, attempting to really bring these characters to life. I think that is the aim, that is the goal. I think he's gonna find success in that and he knows that. Uh, we hope um, there are, he's gonna obviously have his doubters and but we hope that um, he comes through with Brian, not necessarily his vision of these characters, but the vision I think overall people feel about what these characters are, not just him. Uh, and that's, well, that's why, I, why think- I really like that's why I really like the Super Bowl one because there's no way that anyone other than Tom King is quarterback in that. Yeah, it won't yeah. be a James Gunn. It won't feel like a James Gunn project. It won't. It will be done by the person who created it in the first place. You, you, you I'm on board with you, Brian, with this Superman, Supergirl film being uh, the best of them. Could now there was one very conspicuous absence in all this. So I got to bring this around. We did not get any confirmations about what Jason Momoa is up to. Okay. But we know he's in this. We know that because he told you. Mm -hmm. There's other characters, other stuff happening. So I, I, based upon the, and I know he's probably not doing, I know he's done a TV show before, but I would guess if Jason Momoa is being kept in the DCU, he's doing big screen stuff. Because he's still a star. So if you're laying odds based on the projects we have, and I will, I would bet high odds that he's in chapter one somewhere. Where is he? Like if you're laying odds, which project is Jason Momoa? If you know, especially if he's Lobo, which project is Lobo hiding in that they didn't say yet? Supergirl. That's what I thought. And I was like, <laughs> it actually could be even better. Because <laughs> you're not trumping Clark Kent's development. But if you throw him in that kind of storyline, like a revenge storyline that almost is tailor made for what for Lobo, who's already a globe trotting character. I'm, I don't know, man. Lobo and Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. I don't know. That's looking big. <laughs> it's looking big. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, it is looking big. Supergirl is looking like a massive film. Uh, did, are they looking to cast the same girl that's going to be Supergirl in Flashpoint? So that was not said, but I'm going to say no. I'm going to say almost no chance. They said nothing about Sasha Kaye, but I just think when you put together the fact that they've already said the Flash movie resets everything, they certainly have no obligation to carry her forward as their Supergirl in, in, the, in, the, in canon. So I'm going to say, and then they also said, it's sort of cryptic, but they said there had been no castings. I interpreted no castings to mean for the projects that they were announcing today, which would imply that Sasha Kaye is not the yeah. Supergirl they're referring to. Yeah. Uh, anything else, Brian, before we wrap up? No, I mean, other than I think, you know, you, we had talked about where, you know, would the Justice League factor in? They they clearly chose not. They very purposely chose to keep that name out of everyone's mouth for this. But I wouldn't rule out that they're around. I wouldn't rule it out that there's they exist in some early. Fo- I, I don't know. I could see it. They just aren't talking about it yet. But there's clearly no Justice League project that is in the works yet. They're building toward it in a much longer run time horizon. The Authority, Brian, will be a film that sort of puts us in a position to question their presence. I would assume. Yep. Because they are, they're doing stuff that the Justice League would deem inappropriate. Um, How long will they be doing it for? I don't know. So this puts us uh, in a position to ask some very interesting questions regarding Justice League and the authority um, or the end of that movie. It'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. Tell us what you guys think in the comment section below. What you guys 
feel about these announcements, these movies uh, that we're going to be seeing starting in 2025? Does it have you excited? It has certainly uh, has us excited. It certainly has Brian excited, especially Supergirl. It's had, Super, I think Supergirl is one of is perhaps my most anticipated alongside with Superman. Yeah, I agree. And, uh, and then probably a third is uh, a Batman, the, a Brave and the Bold, and then an Authority, and then Swamp Thing. I think that, I think that's right, but I think they did a pretty good job of like giving you a few things that you're like a lock to be excited about. Like I just guarantee, you know, whether it's Superman or Batman part two. And I think it gave you like some new, like legitimately new takes on things to say like, yeah, this could go badly. Like I'm not telling you, like there's a world where Supergirl woman of tomorrow is a disaster, but like yeah. both brave and the bold and Supergirl to me are like, you're taking real swings at something that if you can stick it with the right people, could open up some doors for you in terms of what you could do down the road and, and could be really big hits. Um, so I like, I like that. And then, yeah, like, I think you got some smaller stuff that's like a little bit question, you know, question mark, like, like the authority or what, how big Swamp Thing could realistically be. But, you know, you knew there was going to be a variety. And so they gave you variety. And Brian, and when you talk about um, budgets, Swamp Thing, could it be something that is costly? because of special effects and stuff. See, that's the thing for me. It's like, when I see a project like that, I'm like, the studio can't be feeling like that's a guaranteed $500 million movie. So I would think the budget has to be smaller. That, like, I, that's what I would think. Like, do more power of suggestion. I don't know if that, I, I just, you know, like, as I said, Superman Legacy could be bad and it's still probably going to make at least 300, $350 million global box, right? And so it's like, you give that $100, $150 million, you're like, all right, I, we're probably breaking even, even if we don't do a great film. Swamp Thing, you give that 125 million and it's bad or doesn't click, you're losing a lot of money on that. I, just I think I give I, I give that a one, Brian, a one battering. Swamp Thing is just doesn't for me is like I you. don't want to hear. I've been wanting to do this movie. I mean, like no, 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 no. no. How does this fit in the overall thing? Are you looking to do? Because what I was expecting, possibly to hear, Brian is. Um, the the is it dark? Uh, Justice League dark? Uh, yeah, no mention of that. No mention of they went. They kind of felt like, it almost felt like they did authority instead of Justice League dark. That's what like they kept that on the shelf. But Swamp Thing would would be considered a Justice League dark character, correct? Uh, yes. So I guess you could argue maybe that's their entry point to that. Maybe that is a connectivity if they want. I think do if that. they would have mentioned that, I think this would have been uh, more. Uh, re for me, I would have received it a little bit better, knowing that that's something that they're looking to they're looking to do. But a swamp thing, and if it doesn't hit, where where is at least swamp thing? Where, where do we go? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just think that's a big risk right there. The swamp thing. Yeah, I, know, I noticed that. Uh, I noticed that um, Constantine. Speaking of Justice League Two, Ju Justice League Dark, uh, Constantine Two didn't didn't make the cut. <laughs> ah, word word. <laughs> it's like you know. It, it, when you, when you, it's crazy when you are reminded, like you just reminded me of this movie that n n I forgot completely about. I didn't even know it was coming out <laughs> until you reminded me of it. It's, uh, Keanu Reeves needs to, uh, I don't know, man. He got, he, he needs to stop running things back. <laughs> this is not going to work. But uh, yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of uh, the movies being announced for the DCU. It certainly sounds very exciting. I don't know about that Swamp Thing. That has me concerned. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of that. And uh, what do you think for San Diego, San Diego Comic-Con, um, do you think he's going to reveal the, the directors and some of the cast members and possibly the rest of Chapter 1? Uh, let us know in the comment section below, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. Woo!